Hey everybody, my name is Rodney Dupree with Cajun Living and Cooking. And due to some of the tough times we have in our area right now, due to the coronavirus and the pandemic, uh, we won't be able to go film shows. So uh, we're going to ask for everybody to stay safe like we are. Uh, use your Lysol, clean up. Uh, we're going to air some of our older shows. And uh, we'll have our new commercials on it. And uh, everybody stay safe. Check out the shows. Like us on Facebook. But uh, thanks for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, y'all. We in Hammond over at Bruce Mitchell's house, y'all. And this is everybody knows him, Bruce Mitchell from the Swamp doing? People. Doing good, doing good. Uh, what you gonna cook for us today? I'm gonna cook some uh, biscuits, kind of old times, old school. Yeah. And uh, use my Dutch ovens to cook with my charcoals. And uh, this way we cook a lot when we're camping. And you know we we camp a lot on the road or at the down the river or whatever. Uh -huh. And we go outside and cook. And this is the way you used to do in the old time. I, you can cook anything you can in your house in this oven. In the Dutch oven. In the Dutch oven, and we fry stuff or just whatever you know. But right now I'm gonna cook some biscuits. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start out with a, some flour here. That looks about right. That looks like about a little yeah. two cups, so. Uh, two and a half. So we're going to call this three. All right. Now, i got a couple questions I know people's dying to know. Uh, What's that? How did Swamp People get started? Well, basically what happened, how it got started, I think it was going to be a documentary. Uh-huh. And uh, after they got about four or five days of our feminine sent back to New York and uh California uh -huh. they say hey we got something here and uh, it's just been crazy ever since yeah now yeah. now is there gonna be a sixth year are y'all gonna film uh, for the sixth year actually yes y'all are yep they done called they said we're gonna do season six so I'm excited well, you, about that well you heard it right here y'all he, there will be another season so don't don't get uh, don't get disappointed it will be back one way or the other I'm gonna be out there doing it whether they're filming me or not I'm still yeah. gonna be catching my gators I got you, know? you. I got you so, we're still gonna be living and cooking no matter yeah, well, what yeah, if it's on TV eat. or not we got to eat no matter what we got to eat now uh now you've been on TV for a while how, how is uh how has that changed your life it really uh as far as me personally I haven't changed none uh, my wife keep wanting me to change yeah yeah <laughs> you know uh how can you do something you don't know yeah you know? Uh, uh only thing different is like we, you can't hardly go nowhere if you go out to eat or something you got to allow an extra hour or two or if you go shopping somewhere you got to allow an extra hour or two because you got to meet people sign autographs take pictures yeah or, you know it's yeah. a part of part of part of it but i like to talk so i don't have no problem yeah with it. yeah you got to keep yeah. having whoever's with you going come on come yeah. on yeah come on well, my wife grabs me by the hair and just yanks me and says come on we got to go <laughs> now uh tell me i, I know you're married you got yeah, some kids yeah, been married for uh 34 years got uh -huh. two girls uh what's their names uh janice and uh, Lorraine, that's uh -huh. my daughters. Gotcha. And I got two two grandbabies, and that, that that's fun. If I knew what grandkids would be about, we'd just skip the kids and went straight to the grandkids. <laughs> we have a ball with the grandkids. I, I bet. I bet. Now you hunt and fish too when you're oh, not on yeah, TV. Yeah, shoot, yeah. That's all I try to do: hunt, fish, and cook. And usually I'm hunting something to to, to cook. Hunting you something know? to cook. <laughs> yeah. You like the deer hunt, duck hunt? Oh yeah, deer What's your hunt, favorite? Duck hunt, neutral. Squirrel, rabbit, uh, we do a lot of fishing. Uh, we like to eat fish, turtles. Gotcha. What's your favorite fishing hole or where you like to go fish the I most? I fish in man shack a lot. Do you? Yeah. Uh, catch a lot of catfish down there. I, I love, love the, they got big ones too. Oh, yeah. The yeah. story is you can uh, put soft shell crab on there and catch the big oh, catfish. Oh, we're not going to waste no crab. <laughs> <laughs> if, I got, if I got soft shell crab, I already got something to eat. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. We'll put some Back lit. in the day, we used to. Yeah. But uh, see, back before they had all these buffets and stuff, I had friends that shed crabs and stuff, mm -hmm. and back then, 
they sold to all the restaurants, and if a leg was missing, they couldn't sell it. So oh. they brought them to me. So I, I would have big old A.M.P. bags, if people know what an A.M.P. bag is anymore, yeah. full of soft shell crabs. Well, I'd eat what I could and then fish with some of them too. But they work excellent for fish bait. But, yeah, that was old. I'd it, never done it. I'd heard it, the rumor. It's just hard to cut one up and put him on that on that uh, on that hook. You know, I'd rather you know put him on a piece of bread. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, I'm gonna let you get back to your uh, right. getting your ingredients going right here. Now, uh, uh, on the show, y'all catch alligators and all. Uh, when do you think you caught your first alligator? Legally? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for TV purposes, when you caught your first oh, alligator? Oh, for TV, well, well, that was five, six years ago. But uh, <laughs> I've hunted and fished gators all my life. We used to catch them at the camp and stuff. Yeah. With my grandpa and him. And, uh, and y'all took them up, <laughs> Actually, I'm sure. I didn't, yeah. Well, back then, I didn't know what they was talking about. You know, they would say, you know, they would call it long tail frog. <laughs> oh man so but we ate we ate some down the river like that you know and uh really didn't know what it was until later on in life we ate it you know yeah. it didn't matter what it was the yeah i cooked it you ate it and that's just that was just part of it now who taught you how to alligator hunt probably my grandpa a bear uh I, I got pictures of me and him when i was oh i guess one and two years old oh. and uh he they basically lived down the tents whole river so, uh, you know, it was just uh, something they did. You know, something they did is part of life. Eat, you know, hunting alligator and stuff, and we ate it and stuff. And now, now over the years, though, uh, the alligator rules have changed. I'm sure. To, oh yeah. Over the well, it, first it went to wide open hunting with tags and stuff. You know, and then it got to where you know they cut patches out of the gator here mm -hmm. and there. You know, and, and now it's back to the regular regular old routine of. You know, catching him, and you don't have to put no patch on it. But it's still strictly, you know, you have to have tags, license, and land to hunt alligator. Just don't go out and think you can go hunt an alligator because you're going to go to jail. Right, right. You know, that's people federal. don't realize that. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> and yes. you don't want to go to jail over alligator. No, no. You might as well just go buy you some chicken or get you a cheeseburger from yeah. somewhere or something. Yeah. All yeah. right, y'all. Well, I'm, I'm going to let him go to cooking here and getting everything together. And uh, we're going to check on my aunt, my nanny over here and see what she's cooking and we'll be right back. So y'all hang on. All right, y'all, this is my nanny, Lynette Ernest. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad y'all come out here with us today. Oh, we're honored, thank you. Now, what you cooking? I'm cooking some smothered potatoes. That's my, kind of like my specialty. I, I was telling you, potato stew is my, my ultimate. They love potato stew at my house. Gotcha. But I will cook this because this is a fast little thing, man. You, I'm throwing stuff together. They're hungry. Yeah, so it's like, yeah. okay, throw that in a pot and, and a hot, hot grease. And I just keep stirring and stirring. And then when I see that they're browning and doing their thing, okay. I throw in some, I'm sorry, I throw in some onions. Okay, so we're going to brown the potatoes, throw in the onions. And then I'm going to turn it low and put the lid on. And then I'm, I'm going to put parsley uh, kind of towards the end because uh -huh. that's your little good vegetable that you gotcha. don't want to cook too much. And I put a little bit of parsley. I'm not going to put a whole lot because my family goes, what's that green stuff up <laughs> in the potatoes? You know, it's like, but anyway. Kids freak out on the green yes, stuff. Yes, yes. So anyway, uh, it, you know, it's mostly potatoes and onions. Now, every once in a while, I'll put sausage. Like, um, I'll add just some good smoked sausage. And I say that because sometimes this is just a little side dish. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Some but kind of when that's our supper, then that's... Need we'll, a little we'll, meat in it. Yes, we'll put some sausage in there. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you get things going. Line, sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine snap beans red beans cornbread and mustard greens that's how we live and it sure feels fine turkey squirrel deer gator and hogs 12 gauge shotgun and some rabbit dogs staying at the camp six days straight coming home to mama sure feels great Good. Can't change us, that's the way we know Cajun hey, people live like they did long ago So join the fun, live off the land Cause there ain't nothing better than a little man Tideline, tribe, line, oh, 
his mouth shut just in case he ain't dead, huh? Oh, yeah. We'll be right back after these messages. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com. When you're hungry and you need something quick to do, try Uncle Larry's doing a few. Your day will be here in 20 minutes. Please help me, Uncle Larry. With stew and a few, any stew is possible. Just add the protein. Crawfish stew? You must have been in the kitchen all day. Marry me. When you're hungry and you need something quick to do, try Uncle Larry's stew and a few. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, meat sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's sausage. It's a wonderful Monogramming thing. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you, a very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. Welcome back to Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Bruce. This is uh, this is the old school style of biscuits here. Oh yeah. This is how uh, Mama used to do it back in the yeah. day. Let's see how that goes. Look at that perfect biscuit. Now a lot of people don't know about that. They get their biscuits in a can. Well, we use Vienna sausage cans and different things to cut the biscuits with. Gotcha. Whatever you got handy. Whatever you got. Now y'all. Something I gotta show y'all. He's got a new cookbook coming out. It, it, it'll be on the market by the time this airs. And uh, some of this stuff is inspired from your grandma and your grandpa. Yeah, just different family members and me and my wife uh -huh. and my kids. You know, just stuff we cook all the time. You know, most of it's pretty simple. Uh, and uh, most of our cooking evolves on, it, you know, what it's what you got. What you got on hand. What you got, what you can catch. Uh, oh, in deer season, you eat the deer. That's it, you know. So you can go to his website. And I was thumbing through it a while ago, y'all. And, and there's... And, and it's not just a regular cookbook, because we got pictures of the family, and, uh, you know, me and my grandpa with some alligators, and different recipes I cook. We got pictures of it. Uh, we've been working on this thing, you know, a good while. Really? Really? You know, I liked some of the pictures. I was thumbing through it, and the one that caught my eye here was the famous fatty. Y'all gonna read what this is. It's uh, it's ground meat, five pounds of ground meat, and you lay it out and you stuff it with breakfast sausage, crawfish tails, smoked sausage, crab meat, your favorite cheese. It's got mushrooms and breadcrumbs in it, and then you wrap this baby up in four pounds of bacon. And the picture of this is priceless. So y'all gonna need to get y'all one of these. This is really really neat, and it's uh, authentic. What Bruce has been eating all his life. Yep. All right, you got all the biscuits cut. Yep, we got them cut, and uh, boy, they looking good. They huh? do, they do. Ooh, now we got to cook them. All right, Bruce. Uh, this is uh, a camp oven. Uh, you notice the legs on the bottom of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, the legs are for setting it on charcoal. You see, you can set this over the charcoal, you know, and to bake in them and stuff. Take, for instance, if I'm on bake you put your charcoals on the top ah because the biscuits are in there you can cook yeah. on the top and the bottom yeah you know so gotcha. this, 
But right now I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna make me some milk gravy to go with these biscuits. Some yes, sausage indeed. Gravy. That sounds good. And, uh, I'm now what I'm doing here, throw a little flour in this pot. I like how you measure. That's how I cook. We get enough of this and enough of that. About that much. About yeah, yeah, much. Then add some more. <laughs> more <a> bit. <laughs> Everything's good with butter anyway. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong with butter. So we got the bisquick mix. We got the uh, butter in there. Then you're gonna, what you're gonna do? You're gonna brown that down into a. Yep. We're gonna add some uh, some milk to it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's looking good right there. Cooking on the coals, y'all. This is pretty neat. This is this the old school cooking right here before they had the microwaves. Yep. I need to turn up the fire just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he had it on low. Now he's going to a medium. Look yeah, like you yeah, had yeah. a couple more coals in there. Got to get it cooking. Yeah. I like to cook this flour down like this a little bit. Uh -huh. That butter, mix it up good. Then start adding my milk. Okay. I see you adding a little at a time. Yeah, I like to add just a little at a time and keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Okay. And you're going to see what we're going to have here in a little bit. We're going to have some good... I smell. I smell some of that flavors oh, coming yeah. out of there. Over to the when I get through with this, you could dump this gravy on a tire and eat it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this stuff is good. I was raised on this. Yes, indeed. I just stir, 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 because if you stop stirring, you're going to have dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, that's funny. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we got some pork sausage in the skillet. Yeah, yeah this is just a ground up pork sausage. I like to brown it and uh, put it in my my gravy there in just a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. And, uh, now, something really neat, I, uh, we was talking a while ago, uh, you knew my grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, I knew Mr. Tom pretty good. He used to come to the farm up there when I was up there, and uh, we'd process alligators. And he was an alligator hunter. And uh, actually, him and uh, Mr. A uh, Abel, Mr. Harold Abel, uh -huh. used to come out and they would skin together. And boy, you talk about a team. Oh, they were good. Oh yeah, they they hunt, love hunting them gators. And uh, they trapped, and I would just listen to them. I'd skin right next to them over there. Yeah. Listening to them and. Uh, or they come up with some stories. I bet. They matter got some good old stories. Matter of fact, I got one for you there. Yeah. Uh, we was in the slaughterhouse one day. Uh-huh. You know. Uh, well, actually one night, because we were skinning half the night. And uh, anyway, what had happened, Mr. Harold come in there. He had a knife about that long. <laughs> I said, Mr. Harold, you need to get rid of that knife, because he's walking around, stumbling around. And take it, you know, these men were in the 80s at yeah. this time. And, uh. They were stumbling around with that knife, and I said, you need to get rid of that. I said, you're going to fall and stick somebody with that knife. Well, that was on a Thursday. Well, Friday night, Mr. Harold fell, and he stuck somebody with that knife. Uh-uh. Yep. Me. <laughs> right no there. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, your grandpa man. was there, and he, he, your grandpa ran to the wall and got some paper towels, and uh, he tore them off, and I had the knife sticking in my hand. And I thought Mr. Harold had that big long knife, but he took my advice. He got a shorter one. Yeah. So, but he had that handle buried up to here. Mm, and mm. when he let go, I picked my arm up like that because I thought he had the long knife. I was looking for the whole here. Oh, you thought it went all the way <laughs> yeah. through. But uh, I pulled it out and this blood went everywhere. And your grandpa come up and give me some paper towels and I put them on there and they run in the office and got my wife and she brought me to the hospital and got me all sewed up. Oh, man. Yeah. And, oh, boy, they felt bad about that. But, you know. The good old times, yeah. the good old days alligator hunting. We just huh? laughed about it, you know. Well, y'all done that for years and oh, years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember your grandpa coming in, him and Mr. Harrell. And Mr. Mr. Harrell was real funny about them hooks he had. He had some special hooks he got some, somewhere. And uh, if he'd leave one in the slaughterhouse at night and he'd get home and count his hooks, he had a hook missing, he would call me 11 o'clock at night, 12 <laughs> o'clock at night. Uh, Bruce, uh, I got a hook up there somewhere. Make sure them boys don't throw my hook away. <laughs> oh, they'd leave the hook in the alligator yeah. when they'd bring them up there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And, but they, he would take his and wash them, you know, once he got them out the gator. And He'd reuse them. you reuse them, you know, which we all, re, you know, reuse yeah, the hook. Yeah, but, that's pretty expensive. Yeah, but he had these special stainless steel hooks, and shark hooks, he called them. No. And he, he paid like a dollar fifty a piece for them Ooh. back then. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was good money back yeah, then. Yeah, but he had them for years. And uh, I know some of the Mabel boys that, that still fishing gators, and they're actually still using the same hooks. His yeah. same old hooks. Yep. That's I'm been around to, all them years. I'm going to try to get one from one of them boys Just hang on the wall. How's going? We're fixing to incorporate everything. Yeah. This uh, look like my sausage is pretty brown here. Got it looking pretty good. I need to put a little salt and pepper in here. Oh, yeah. 
this grease right here and drain it off of here. Yeah. But I don't. <laughs> no. It wasn't that much in there anyway. No, that's not that much. That's going to make your grave a little bit better, too. Ooh, a little bit of drippings in there. Oh, yeah. That's a good, it's made a good color on it oh, now. Oh, yeah. Now we, 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 we cooking now. Well, that's something Ooh. you got to proportion just right. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. with all that fancy measuring we do. I tell you what, you make this at the deer camp, you ain't got to worry about cleaning no pot. <laughs> <laughs> they got a biscuit left, they're going to clean the bottom yeah. of that pot with They'll that They'll sop it up. Mm, yeah, I think we might need a little more. A little bit? A little more milk. Gotcha. Well, it sure looks good. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all, we're going to add a little milk to this. We're fixing to get the biscuits on. Food's just about ready. Y'all hang tight. The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever. But we haven't lost our hometown. Food. Lower Supply and Home Center, an authorized hustler, Bobcat, and Toro lawnmower dealer, specializing in service, support, and satisfaction. Come see the wide selection of new mowers, parts, string trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and much more. Our home center features hardware, feed, outdoor cooking supplies, hunting gear, and everything for the do-it-yourself homeowner. Come take a short country drive to the hidden jewel of Livingston and experience real professional knowledge and health. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center. Man, where'd you get those Mr. Pates from? There's the new hunting fishing store. New hunting and fishing store? New hunting and fishing store! New hunting and fishing store? Yeah, on Highway 44 in Gonzales. It's Ascension Living and Outdoors. They carry a full line of fresh and saltwater baits and tackle, including Matrix, Voodoo Shrimp, Missile, Zoom, and local baits like Delta Lures and Humding. And the hunting section is loaded with calls, scents, knives, attractants, and much more. They even carry deer candy and Nate's buck bait. Oh yeah, ladies, there's even a gift shop. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Welcome back to Cajun Living and Cooking. And then you put the camp style pot with yeah. the legs yeah. over it. See them biscuits in there? And the biscuits are in there. Raw right now. Raw right now. Uh, a lot of these companies put out cookbooks mm -hmm. and they actually got a, 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 a thing in there that tells you. Oh, how many briquettes for? for like eight on the bottom and 17 on top. That's 25 cold. That will get this pot up to a 12 inch Dutch oven up to 350 degrees. But it's, you know, you the good thing about this kind of stuff, I cook a lot of peach cobblers and stews yeah. and you name it there. So you don't need gas or electricity when you cook? No, uh-uh. And actually, I do it with wood. You know, build you up yeah. a fire, let the coals build up. Yeah, I guess after you're doing a couple times, you, uh, yeah, you, you get, know just you about how much coals it, you need. You know? Now, how long are these going to have to sit? Uh, about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes, and we 20, should have... 25, about the same as a regular oven. Okay. Now, not... Only thing different now, I'm, I'll show you in about five minutes. Uh huh. You got to turn these pots. Oh. You know, you want to take and always turn mine about a half a turn to the right. The pot. Oh, okay. Okay. So you don't get to stir it, you got to turn it. And then, 
Oh, you turn your lid? Turn your lid a half a turn to the left. Oh, all right. And what that does is keep your, your heat even through the pot. So every five minutes, four, five, ten minutes, you take and turn your pot. Okay, we ought to have some biscuits in this pot about right now. You were now. saying about the smelling. Yeah, you smell it? I do. You smell it? I do. I do yep. smell it. Well, you ready to see what we it got in here? Smells really good. Drum roll, please. Son of a gun. Without an oven. That's Dutch oven cooking right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get this kind of cooking, and not everybody knows about this kind of cooking. And it's simple. It you really just, is. You just got to get you a pot and play with it, you know? Well, these days people's lazy. Yeah. They don't but want to do it. It's good, you know. We got hurricanes around here, you know. Yeah. You get your bag of charcoal and a Dutch oven, you can cook anything in. I cook deer stews, uh, jambalayas, uh, you just name it, uh, peach cobblers. I love them peach cobblers in here. I do too. Here. I do. Well, I any do. kind of cobbler. I go out and pick my blackberries around here mm -hmm. and uh, come back. Me and the grandkids make us a blackberry cobbler. Yeah, you got Ooh. happy grandkids then. Yeah, and then we, we make our own ice cream and... Well, you're talking about good. That's the good old days, y'all. That's what we're talking about, the good old days. All right, yeah. I think we've got all the food done. Yeah. We're ready to plate some up That's and taste some. About. It's time to taste, y'all, so hang on. All right, y'all, I got a special treat here. This is my Momo Dupree, my dad's mom, and she has made a cake for us today, and it looks really, really good. Now, what's the name of the cake? Cajun cake. Cajun cake. Now, uh, can you tell me how to make it, or what's the ingredients? Yes, it's... Uh... You make your own mixture for the cake, and then you put a whole can of 20-ounce can of pineapple in it uh -huh. in the dough. Okay, uh -huh. you mix that up. Then you put uh, a topping, which has butter, pecans, and coconut. And uh, It looks butter. really... Butter, yeah, it's good. It looks really, really moist. It is a very rich cake, and it's an old Cajun recipe I got from an old friend. All right, and you've been cooking that a while. Oh, yes. Everywhere I go, if I bring it to a party or something, somebody wants the recipe. Everybody wants the Cajun yeah. cake. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to give it the taste test, Momo, in a minute. We're going to get Bruce to try it out and see what he oh, thinks about okay. it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for cooking the cake. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, we back. Bruce, everything's ready. Everything's ready to taste. Well, you know I'm ready to taste it. I hear you. Me too. It didn't take us long to do this either. Mmm. Are good. Man, that gravy rocks. I ain't tried the potatoes yet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. That 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 uh flavoring she was talking about on there. Let's try Momo's cake. Mm -hmm. Son, I love that. That is good. That is good. That moist. That's you can keep on. You don't even need milk with that. You just keep on eating it. Well, Bruce, I had a blast over here me cooking too. with you. And you know me, I love to cook and I love to eat. Me too. And that's what we do down here in Louisiana. Yes, indeed. A lot of hunting in between, and that's hunting something to cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get together maybe when it cools off, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we'll go uh, catch something. Or yeah, yeah, let's do shoot that. Shoot something. And, uh, By then, I might have my kitchen ready, and we can cook something. Yeah, that'd be really We're neat. We're going to cook anyway. We're going <laughs> to cook. It's just if we're together or not when we're cooking. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a blast, y'all. This has uh, been a really good day. Got to see Bruce. Got to come over and meet the family. Had my family here. Had my grandma here. My aunts come over. It's been a really, really special day. And uh, I want to say uh, it's been fun. And thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. Hey, I hope y'all like the show. Uh, during these hard times right now with the coronavirus, uh, things are going to get better. And together we're going to be able to uh, fix this, you know. We're going to go back to normal soon. And when things do go back to normal, I want y'all to let us know your events coming up. When things are coming, give us a call. Uh, I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week.